Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're going to show out Rich's 140 gallon reef tank. How's it going today, Rich? Good, man. Awesome. So your tank is looking fabulous as always, and stuff is growing in like crazy since last time I was here. So that was probably, it's been probably a good year or two now with everything, so. I think a year and a half, I think. Yeah. So this all started from frags, right? All frags, no okay. colonies. That's crazy. And then about how long has your tank been up and running? Uh, it's about two years and four months. Okay, that's pretty good. Now for your tank, like you're, you're getting pretty packed here. Like you're running out of frag space. I have no spot for anything. <laughs> I'm at a point where I think I might have to break it down and restart just to keep the hobby fresh. Yeah, that's a crazy place to be. Or you just need a bigger tank so you have more room for coral. <laughs> it's coming, it's yeah? coming. Yeah. You're actually gonna do it? Once I move, I will be able to uh, get a bigger tank and we'll eventually get a fish room. As you can see, there's way too many tanks in here for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you got the, got the freshwater planted tanks around as well. All aspects of the hobby is good. So what do you, are you still running a calcium reactor on this tank or what are you doing with yes, it? Yes, still a vertex calcium reactor. Yep. Easiest thing that you can imagine. Uh, I'm, I'm done with dosing. There's times when I will come back and my dosing bottle will be empty and you know how we just kind of lose track in the, in the nice weather of summer. And uh, you know, it, it does take a toll on the corals in your tank, but with the calcium reactor, it's, uh, it's self-sufficient, very automated. Yeah, I, I appreciate how you could ignore it for about a year at a time. Yeah, for sure. Do you dose anything else or just calcium reactor and that's it? Uh, I dosed uh, the rest C, A, B, and C, D. Okay. So those ones, I don't really religiously dose. Um, I used to, but I'm probably about 20 mil every every week or every two weeks. Yeah. Whenever you think about it. Whenever I think about it, whenever I see there's any anything that's going wrong, color changes in the corals, um, that's when I, I kind of gauge by what my corals look like. And I really don't dose too much of it. I like to dose a little bit and just visualize and, and see what the core, how the coral will, will react to mm -hmm. it. Yeah, I think once you have it long enough, you can just look at the corals and tell us something's off, and you probably know it pretty well by now. I, yes and no. I, I try <laughs> to be, but no, I, there's so much more to learn in this hobby. I mean, it's, every corner is different. Something always comes at you, and uh, yeah, yeah, every day is a, is a different thing to deal with in the reef tank. Yeah, it's true. You'll, you'll never know it all. That, that's the one thing I do love about it. You're always learning. Yeah. As much as I obsess about everything, every day I somehow learn something new. Yes, you do. Yes, yep. you do. So flow-wise, you got two MP40s and two gyres in here. So two MP40s and the two gyres are the 280, the older model, but they're the bigger ones. So they're bigger than the 350s now. I'm a big believer in flow. Yeah. Uh, the return pump is, uh, it's an AC pump, but it was a Laguna Pond pump. pump. Mm -hmm. So it's 4,800 gallons per hour. Uh, calculate it out with all the, the fittings and stuff like that. I think I am running about 2,800 gallons back to the to the tank. That's a pretty good chunk. Um, yeah, I, I get it. You know, a lot of people say that you don't need that much return, you know, um, turnover rate. But I think, you know, the more the merrier, to be honest with you. Yeah, as long as you're not blasting the flesh off the corals, I think you can basically give as much flow as you want. Yeah. I have successfully blasted the flow off some before, so. Yeah, me too, me too. A little, little too close to the pumps. We've all been there before. Yep. So light-wise, running Radeons and the Reef Brights? Yep, Radeon Gen 4s. Um, nothing wrong with them. I don't see, you know, I, I've been contemplating whether I should upgrade to the G5s and with the, the fan noise and all that stuff, I've been really hesitant on you, making this move. Yeah, the G4s are awesome, Lice. You don't need to. Like, yeah, G3s, I'd say it's worth it, but G4s are still awesome. So, yeah. and they already have really good spread. And they're For sure. And par, so. And just to, to spoo things up a little bit, I use the XHOs just to make yeah. sure that I get that coverage, the Y spread. Now, do you use it for color pop or just that little bit of fill light on the edges? Both. Both. Yeah. You know, I can't, I don't like to run the radio all the time, and I leave the, the XHOs on longer so I can, you know, enjoy my time, or my tank while it's uh, under heavy blue. Yeah, nice. Schedule wise, is it kind of like AB plus ish, or what are you running for your schedule? AB plus, um, a little lower on the green and the red. Yep. Um, and it's about, I run it for 12 hours, not very conventional. Mm -hmm. um, ramp down, ramp up about 
two hours on each side. Yep. Nice. And about 60%. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, this is pretty good. 60%. Oh, you do have three thirties though. So that's yeah. That's a good chunk. Yeah. That's a pretty good chunk. Awesome. Anything else you do for the tank maintenance wise or dosing or? Uh, yeah, I do the Red Sea AB plus. I've been finding that that's one of the best amino additives I can use on the market right now, at least for me, from yeah. my experience. And then reefoids, target feed uh, every once or twice a week. Uh, sometimes I get lazy and I kind of <laughs> forget. So it goes to uh, maybe in a couple weeks I, I feed once. But I try to do it before the water change. So what I would do is I would target feed, turn off all the pumps, mm -hmm. target feed all the LPS. And I try to blast the, the SPS with some of that stuff too. But yeah. um, and once I do that, then I do my water change. I wait about 30, 40 minutes and I do my water change and then, and then I let it go again. So it kind of cleans itself at the same time. Nice, that's a good way to do it. So do you, so you mainly do the LPS. Do you feed your SPS at all? Uh, no, no, no. They just get whatever is floating around the tank. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find a big difference from feeding your corals? Yes, I do. If you mm -hmm. look at the corals, they're very puffy. Mm -hmm. The propagation of uh, those jawbreakers, uh, mushrooms, they, yeah, they're growing like crazy. Yeah, they do. They do fairly well. It was very hard for them to, uh, to, to get their foot attached to the glass. But mm -hmm. once they, they attach, they are, uh, they're pro prolific or, um, proliferating. Yeah. They look awesome. I got tons of them. You do? No, I don't. Oh, <laughs> mine never did anything. Yours have taken off. Yeah, it's been taken off and it's killing everything in the surrounding area. And it's really, <laughs> really bugging me. I, I got to do something. The plague of jawbreakers. So it's a rough <laughs> problem to have. Yeah. <laughs> Your little clown just like plays dead in there. It cracks me up. Just yeah, my favorite outside. clowns of all the clowns. Stormtroopers yeah. is the way to go. Oh, uh, they're super cool. <laughs> they always crack me up. Yeah. Awesome. Um, filtration wise, do you got any th running any medias or what do you run for your sump filtration? So the filtration wise, um, I have a large sump that is almost the size of the tank up top. Um, here, I'll open that for you. Okay. So you do have a pretty decent sized sump down here. It's almost as big as my display tank. <laughs> yep. So water comes down to the filter fleece roller. And I, I would not go with another tank without the filter fleece. Oh. So much nicer than So much socks, nicer, eh? man. Dude, I, I cannot stress enough that, like how much I hate socks. It just, yep. it's such a pain. So it is Aquamax. Uh, the only reason why I chose that is because it has an inch and a half uh, downpipe. Oh, nice. That's a good size. Yeah, so it, it will handle up, up to 1,500 gallons, which yeah. is uh, pretty decent. Um, this, the larger chamber used to be a whole fuge and I was growing chalo like crazy. It was on an H3 AE um, uh, <laughs> Kessel, Kessel yep. light. Um, so recently I've changed it a little bit. The corals are growing out of control. So I need a place to, to stash my frags and stuff like yeah. that. So the little back chamber there, it's a little fuge. I have those tons of underwater lights to uh, keep the fuge going and it's been oh, nice. working out pretty good. Um, so do they th grow fairly well? They do. They do. I gotta say it's uh, it's been pretty good. I, I really realized that you don't need that much lighting for the fuge to grow or the the chato to grow. They're also you know an inch away from it, right? Instead of yeah, you know, for sure, a foot or two above the for water sure. like some of the other ones. So yeah, keeping some of the media in the front for my friends, you know, their, yeah. their tanks. That's a solid chunk of media. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I think it went a little a little crazy. Um, Skimmer is the Octopus Elite 200. Uh, it's a little undersized for the amount of fish I have and the amount of stuff I feed, but I think it's it's a really good skimmer, really quiet, mm -hmm. solid performer. Yeah, super quiet actually. Yeah. There's a Core 20 back there that pumps water to my chiller outside. Mm -hmm. uh, it's right behind the skimmer okay. and, uh, and it's going to the UV on the left hand side. It's mm -hmm. a Lifeguard UV 40 water. Mm -hmm. And I change that bulb out every, every year. Nice. Do you actually need a UV down or a chiller down here? I do, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You know, that chiller kicks on during winter too because I like to heat my house a little warmer than yep. normal. And then the bio pellets is just there for, I'm gonna take that offline soon. Uh, my nitrate has been bottoming out. <laughs> so I need to bring it up and it's, yeah. some of the coral colors could be a lot better. Yeah. So yeah, once your tank, your colonies are big enough though, I mean, they're sucking up a ton of your nutrients, so. Yeah. Nice, so fairly simple filtration. Keeping it nice and easy, I like it. Super straightforward, buddy. Yep, awesome. I guess now, now this is a good question, like from 
a year and a half ago, right? The first year versus two and a bit years, how much of a difference in love and time you put in the tank? Because I know the first, it takes a lot more up front, right? And once the tank settles in, it's established, there's a lot less effort. So I think when you first start your tank, you, you are very engaged. You want to be doing things to make things, tweaking things, because not obviously your tank build isn't what exactly you want. So you're always tweaking things. Yeah, you're right. You're in there all the time trying to make things good. And, you, and of course, gauging your corals growth and all that stuff, you tend to change up whatever, you, you know, whatever set mm -hmm. at first. But then after a little while, when everything is running and it's doing well, I wouldn't suggest anybody touching their stuff. Just yeah. leave it as it is. Just make sure you do your maintenance. Do your maintenance and stop messing with it? Stop messing with it, man. Keep your hands out of it and just let it go. Yeah, that's the last few months has been a big thing. I try not to have my hand, hands in there every day like I used to. So. Yeah. It's hard. Sometimes There's... it's hard, you know, stuff falling over and you have to get in there intervene. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. The whole system, it was running on Pearl Flex, um, and now I changed it to Apex. Um, I'm oh, a, the controller. The okay. controller, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think any reef tank, successful reef tank, needs a controller on it. So how do you like the Apex versus the Pearl Flex? Uh, let's, let's, that's a topic we shouldn't get into, because <laughs> we'll be enough. here all day. <laughs> <laughs> we'll save that for a future update. Right. Yeah, it's always interesting. But yeah, I know the tank's definitely looking awesome. It's nice and packed. I'd love seeing big colonies instead of just, you know, little frags in a tank, so. Yeah. Yeah, Top. my first uh, encounter with a uh, with an awesome reef tank was a guy named uh, Dennis out in Abbotsford. Yeah. Um, I went there to grab some frags and uh, when I stepped into his house and, and he opened his doors, I saw his reef tank and it was just large colonies. It was mm -hmm. so impressive. You know, I was in front of the tank on for hours yeah you know you have to kick me out but you know ever since then you know it, this is what it's all about right it really is man love it yeah just seeing like all these massive callings over it just it just makes it look like such a mature filled in reef tank i love it yeah and i i frag trust me i i, I go in there and frag all the time and yeah and yeah. you don't even notice it when stuff is going well they just grow and i think you know propagation really helps it mm -hmm. to grow more um, I've actually hold, uh, had a bunch of people mention that too. Wincy, another girl I did a video, the same thing. She says, you know, if you frag it lots, they'll actually encourage it to grow more. Yeah. As long as, granted, the Within water reason. quality yeah. has to be good. Yeah, exactly. I've been collecting my fishes for a while too. Not collecting, but mm -hmm. I've been, you know, I, I really like certain fishes. My tangs, you know, my Achilles, my black tang, mm -hmm. um, and that Borbonius on there, in the corner there, in the mm -hmm. cave. Yeah, they're pretty cool fish. Yeah, it's one of my favorite. The clowns are nice. You know, I've been through all these wrasses, the fancy ones, mm -hmm. the Labuti, the Romboys, you know, but those, uh, they don't seem to last that long, yeah. especially in a smaller tank. I yeah. mean, if you have a 500 gallon, by all means, get some. Yeah. Do you have a favorite fish? Uh, I would say probably the Bourbonius. Yeah, they're super cool. Yeah. So you find yourself more into the fish or the coral lately? Oh, I think I'm into both. Yeah. I, I like really, it's it's an amalgamation of both uh, coral and fish that makes a reef. You wouldn't have one without the other. Yep. And I think having a decent fish load is actually good for the corals as well, so. Yeah, nothing like fish poop. Yep, you betcha, free coral food. <laughs> Nature's finest. That's right. Yep, any other plans for the tank in the near future? Uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're looking to relocate and uh, once we do that, I will get concept to make me a, a five foot by three foot by 20 tall tank. Oh, nice. That'd be cool dimensions. Yeah. Uh, I was contemplating if I should do a six footer, but you know, uh, I need room for my, for my shrimps. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, the three foot depth will make a huge difference. Though. It will. It will. I just actually plumbed another guy's tank, um, Corey from Shoreline's tank. Mm -hmm. It's the exact dimension and I really, really like it. Oh, awesome. Actually, his room was kind of big, so it's, it did seem a little small. You know, I want somewhere, something that my, my Achilles can actually grow. This poor guy's been here for three years, and he's yeah. just... He's, he's uh, still pretty tiny, though. He's tiny, man. Like, he should be, like, a, like, should be way bigger. Yeah, like, your black tang looks like the biggest tang. I mean, his fins are out, but... Yeah, and my poor naso, it just doesn't want to grow. Yeah. Yeah, it's super tiny still. Yeah. It's almost an advantage if your fish stays smaller. It is, it is. I really yeah. like it. 
but you know it's like a jail cell for them i yeah. want them to to you know exploring and have space and swim around it's a good excuse for an upgrade that's right awesome thanks so much for the tour yeah no problem man well thanks looking awesome buddy thanks for coming by Thank you.